be honest, who of your friends and family was most like hyped to discover you were in Fallout? Actually, quite a few of my friends. Yeah, quite a few of my friends freaked out. And some family members, my brothers were quite impressed. One of them was quite impressed. The other two just were like, cool. Huh. All right. I preferred Arcane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I had, my brother was pretty hyped, but I didn't know until my little nephew was actually speechless. You know, that's when you know somebody was shook by it. It was like, we know each other. And he didn't know how to talk around me all of a sudden. Br brotherhood yeah. of... Stay, 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 stay. You're, you're in the... You, the, the seriously? Is it coming? You know? Yeah, yeah. I love it when people try to get little spoilers out of you and you're like, I'm not gonna... I don't talk. I don't tell anybody like anything. Vault. I don't tell anybody anything. Like a vault. I didn't even realize. I can't. Liar. I, can't. I did. I swear. I'm not that, that smart. I'm not that smart. You're too good an actress for me not to believe that was on oh, purpose. I'll take it. Thanks. <laughs> the mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. You're an actual vault dweller. I am. <laughs> I thought all you dipshits were dead. Anyway, moving on, I want your audition stories for this. Like, I imagine it's pretty odd pretending to be in a suit. Uh, yeah. The crazier stuff was also being on a set. I mean, seeing what Howard Cummings and his team had been building, I, I got to walk into a vault. That was part of the audition? It was part of the audition. This felt like out of the storybooks, you know, you try the suit on, does it fit type of thing, but obviously that full suit doesn't fit me. It, I have to be massively tall before I am then put on platforms to be a monster. <laughs> it was crazy, and the film camera rolling. Um, what else? Ella was there. Oh, so you were already on board? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my I, I did a meeting with Geneva, Graham and Jonah, and then read the script after the meeting, which was, you know, kind of backwards for me. I did my audition on Zoom, and I thought it went really badly. And I, and it was, I just, I, I sort of balanced my computer on top of a very tall stack of books and it was slightly wonky and it, I just thought it was so bad. I couldn't believe I got the part. I really couldn't. And then we did our chemistry test on Zoom. Do you remember? Yeah. Trying to do a chemistry test when one, one person's on Imagine. mute. Imagine. There's a log, a, a lag. It, it was, yeah. There's also that weird thing of like, do I look in the camera of right. my computer or do I look at the face I can see? Yeah. And you're like waiting for the next line, like. Yeah, should I start reading before? You know, yeah. <laughs> if in doubt, just say okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okie dokie and carry on. <laughs> Are you fully aware, though, Ella, how much that's going to follow you around? Okie dokie. Yeah. It's part of my lingo now. I started about halfway through filming, just like, Ella, we're ready for you on set. Okie dokie. <clears throat> you know, and now it's it's all I say. I can't stop. So you're just going to get people in the street just shouting or even whispering, like on the tube or something. <laughs> you know, I actually don't think I'll mind it. It's <laughs> at I, first. It's not the worst it's one I've gotten on the tube. Some, some positivity to the phrase. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> dokey. Okay, well, yeah. It's quite yeah. nice, actually. I'll take it. Yeah. Fair point. If you insist on staying, then you will have to adapt. Uh huh. Do you get a number of people, Ella, who can't quite believe that you're from the UK? Do you still get the mind blown face? I do, and I, I really. I take that as a compliment. That's, it's nice. But I, I like being British. I'm going to keep it. I imagine her accent's getting really strong while she's here, right? It he is. did say that. We got off the plane. And all of a sudden I was like, what? <laughs> he said, you've gotten more British in the last 10 minutes. I think my, my, I lose my accent a little bit when I've been in the States too long, and especially when I've been doing an American accent for a long time. But uh, yeah, luckily I've got enough people back home to trash, me. Trash became rubbish. I was like, what? Okay, I've always said rubbish. <laughs> Who is this? I've always said rubbish. I say sweater. That's the one that I hate myself for saying. It should always be jumper. It's so much better. What about the uh, idea of, of Fallout the game being turned into this TV show? Because for so many people, this is a dream literally come true. How are you finding the idea of trying to encapsulate all of this history? 25 years, do you have a good, simple answer to the question of what is it about Fallout that's so appealing? The tone. Yeah. Honestly, I, I mean, it, and it was something that fans of the game would recognize immediately. But to, for me, a newcomer to, to the franchise, I was just surprised by it. I thought, like, what holds all this together at the same time, you know? Uh, the, the humor, the, the, the violence that's almost a spectacle. It's almost circus-like. Look out at this wasteland. Looks like chaos. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. 
that dark gallows humor juxtaposed against this incredibly violent sequences just totally just really kind of disrupts the brain. So I talk about if you want to have like a crazy out-of-body experience, this is the show for you. There's a lot of post-apocalyptic kind of entertainment, but there's nothing like Fallout. A lot of that goes back to the world before the bombs fell, you know, this kind of naive utopian version of what the nuclear future will give us and all that goes wrong. And whether you're someone watching the show and seeing these characters or you're playing the game, when you're put in that reality of the wasteland, it's like, what would you do to survive? And it has some very harsh moments there, but it also, it wants you to have a good time. Mm. Right, it's going to wink at the camera. There's some dark humor that serves us really well in the games, obviously. And one of the brilliant jobs that Jonah uh, and crew did, everybody on this, was finding that tone and weaving it in and out. Where one moment it's an action epic, and and one moment it's a dark comedy. Oh, unless I see it with you. and grabbed a moldy one <clears throat> i completely agree and you can't make it too heavy you can't make it too light it's like a souffle <laughs> well said i well said i was never able to bake a souffle so hopefully yeah. yeah please use that in the rest of your media <laughs> talk. you know what it's like a post-apocalyptic souffle <laughs> <laughs> people are going to come after you ain't much stage clean up here vaulty Well, now that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. I imagine working with Walton Goggins and Kyle as well, obviously. Did you ever get intimidated or did that sort of fall away when they made the first dad joke? Well, actually with Walton, <laughs> it, it, very intimidating because he looks terrifying because he, he's in the head-to-toe prosthetics the entire time. But I remember the first time we did a scene together, I came onto set and was absolutely terrified of this, this ghoul. And then I, I got up close and I could see he was crying. You know, we're filming in New York outside under the sun. It's like, oh, so, so hot. It's like 105 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. And, and, I, and I thought, well, it's the first day. It's very emotional. No, he was sweating. He was sweating out of his eye holes, the only yeah. gaps in his prosthetics. And so that made him a little bit less intimidating. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah. And also extra creepy. Or, yeah, or more intimidating more because, intimidating. yeah, he looked... Scary. I like the idea that you thought, God, he is a big fan. <laughs> He's crying. So I thought, should I be crying? Should I be crying? Ooh, yeah. Quick, quick, think of my dad. <laughs> Was that your toughest day That's on set? Just preparation. That's actor yeah. preparation. Really working through the emotion. Very proud of you. I think they asked me if I wanted a cooling suit. And I said, of course not. <laughs> Why would I ever do Take that? one. <laughs> day two. Like, you know, it's like, day two. Oh, please, cooling suit. Cooling suit. Please. Did I see in one video, though, you were asked, you guys, there's all four of you, who's the big game fan? Like, who's the actual one who's played the games? Did I see your hand go up? Okay, I've been playing about three years and I'm on level two. <laughs> I'm on level two. I think we have to imagine the camera hitting a wall <laughs> and my turning out. No, it is. Someone told me I need to invert the controls <laughs> because I, I get really frustrated that I... It just doesn't come naturally to me. Mm. And I get really mad because the problem with being competitive and not very good is you're just angry all the time. <laughs> and, and that's how it feels. So I spent a lot more time watching other people play the game. It seemed like a more efficient use of my time rather than just smashing my controller on the ground. Um, I did mention I have brothers, right? It's sort of bred the competitiveness into me. I get it. Um, but I, we both watched people play the game, yeah. right? Twitch and YouTube Twitch and all of that. Uh, and that was useful. Excuse me. Hi. I just want to ask you for directions. You do have these grace notes that are in teasers and trailers, so I'm not overstepping here. Yeah. For example, you know, gun out, speaking to a NPC <laughs> and beginning a conversation with a weapon in their face is chef's kiss. Yeah. Where did that come from? Was that in an early script? Because it delighted me. In failing that dialogue. Completely. <laughs> Meaning the character doesn't. Um, look, that's, you know, Grandma Geneva writing the scripts and diving into the games and just saying, hey, what is, what is the tone? Um, and finding those moments. We were talking about translating it. The other thing I point out, we, we, we approach the games is each one is unique. Mm. You know, we go into Fallout 4, I approach it where no one's ever played a Fallout game before. Mm. So each of them, each game is, is a moment in time for a Fallout in the same way the show is, mm -hmm. right? And so, yes, it has callbacks to things, 
but it also it moves the story forward a little bit. That's the beauty of being able to work with so many people that you just deeply, deeply trust. I mean, Jonah is also a fan of the games. He's played a lot. There's so much, like you say, so much detail, so many little moments. You know, there's comedy in every moment, even the darkest, most devastating ones. So I leave you with this final question on that note. What was your least glamorous day on set? What was the day where you went, yeah, that wasn't fun? Well, the, okay, episodes three and four, Mm -hmm. let's just say Lucy really gets put through it. Mm -hmm. There is maybe the second time Lucy and the ghoul meet. Hello again. A scene involving a finger monster and uh, water. That's all I'll say for fear fear of spoiling. And, I mean, she doesn't look very glamorous. She looks bedraggled. But that doesn't mean it wasn't fun. I think that's the just the joy of it, right? Yeah. Is being able to really go to the extent of like human capability and just desperation and survival. And that's exciting to me, really being able to get into the, you know, the theme of survival. I can't say okie dokie again. <laughs> <laughs> if I have to say okie dokie again. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date. You can listen to my Radio 1 movies and TV podcast screen time on BBC Sounds. And you can find these interviews in full on BBC iPlayer by searching Movies with Ali Plum.